and a border in front of the Wesley room were planted. So if you'd like to go and look at those on your way out, you're welcome to. But to ensure that the plants take root and thrive, they need to be watered regularly over the coming weeks. If you're willing to go on a watering rotor, please contact me. Let us be still for a moment as we prepare for worship. On this our Harvest Festival Sunday, I welcome and we all welcome our own minister, the Reverend Leslie Noon, to lead us in worship. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Janet. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be with you. And uh, uh, as Janet has said, it's good to welcome everybody on Zoom. And uh, I understand that uh, one or two people who fortunately he wished to be here in person uh, weren't able to be because of our, our numbers here in church. Uh, so please book early if you'd like to come next week. Our call to worship. In the fading of the summer sun, the shortening of days and cooling breeze, we see the creator's hand. In the browning of leaves once green, morning mists, autumn chill, we see the creator's hand. In the bringing in of the harvest, and the cycle of nature, we see the creator's hand. And so on this, our harvest festival, we start with that traditional harvest hymn, number 123, or the words will be on your screen. Come, ye thankful people, come.
our church looks very different from how it might otherwise or usually look on our harvest festival. Usually our whole church would be decorated with different groups all playing their part. And usually we would bring harvest gifts which would fill the front of the church. Today, because of ongoing COVID restrictions, it is of course not so. Although thanks to Rosemary, we have a beautiful real harvest arrangement here at the front of church. And indeed, actually, as Janet has already told us, our side garden has been planted with bee and butterfly friendly plants just yesterday afternoon and wildflower plug plants along in front of the windows of the Wesley room. So in another way, in fact, we are preparing for harvest as we look with hope for all these plants to grow and to thrive. But perhaps the comparative barrenness of our church this morning will act as a reminder for us. Whilst we have much to be thankful for, whilst we praise God for the song of harvest home, as we have just sung, we must also be aware that for many, their cupboards are bare, their stomachs are empty. There is an unjust sharing of the fruits of creation. And so a prayer of confession, let us pray. Oh God, you have given us a world of beauty and we have spoilt it. A world to feed us and yet so many go hungry. A world of riches and we are unwilling to share. A world to care for and we think only of ourselves. Forgive us, gracious God, every time your heart is saddened by our selfishness. Every time we have no thought for others, no cares but ours. Enable us to see this world as a gift from you that can be shared, and those who live on it as our neighbours. We ask this, that your name may be glorified through the beauty of this world and the service of our lives. Amen. Harvest, it's an ancient festival. Peoples and cultures all around the world and across the centuries have celebrated the reaping and gathering of grain and other grown products. It's not specifically a Christian festival. Indeed, there is little of it in the New Testament. Although the Hebrew scriptures, our Old Testament, tell us of three distinct harvest festivals that the Israelites celebrated. The harvest that churches celebrate today actually has its roots in Victorian England with hymns such as the one we have just sung. And that hymn, which has started countless, countless harvest festivals all around the world has always intrigued me because actually it's only really the first verse and possibly parts of the second verse that speak to us of harvest itself. 
The last two verses are nothing to do with the gathering of the fruit and the crops. Instead, those last two verses refer to the harvest of people and pick up particularly on the parable of the weeds in Matthew 13. And Jan is going to read us some verses from that chapter now. Matthew 13, verses 36 to 43. The parable of the weeds explained. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters the angels. As the weeds are pulled up, and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and anyone who does evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then, the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. On the one hand, I have to say that I find this a rather scary parable. I cannot help but wonder if I am part of the problem in the world, the weed that will ultimately be cast aside. However, on the other hand, the parable is also deeply reassuring. Because even if I am part of the problem, the parable tells a story of a God who waits, who gives us a chance time and again. The parable reminds us that it is not for us to judge, but to know that in the wisdom of God, ultimately evil is temporary and good will endure. Yes. We live in an imperfect world and no human effort completely can completely eradicate that. But that was never our job anyway. Our job, the task that we are given, is to live as faithfully and as obediently as possible, bearing good fruit in our lives as much as we can. And that, I think, leads us on to our second reading, which Alan is going to read. Second reading is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the Spirit... <clears throat> But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law.
So if you hadn't already realized it, today on our harvest festival, we are not exploring the more traditional harvest themes of creation or food, etc. Instead, we are exploring the theme of harvest of ourselves, following actually very clearly on from our first harvest hymn. And indeed, it's very easy to see why Jesus used the analogy more than once of seeds and crops, etc., when speaking of the way that we live our lives. Jesus lived in an agrarian society much more than we do. But even for us today, we can see the easy links that are to be made. When farmers or gardeners plant seeds, we know the care that must be taken. Land has to be prepared and soil has to be cultivated. Indeed, the soil down the strip of garden in Llewellyn Street that was planted only yesterday has been being prepared for months. And that's exactly the same in our spiritual lives. Let's take those fruits of the spirit from Galatians that we've just heard about and consider how we cultivate these fruits. Love. Do I seek the highest good of others? Joy. Do I possess a gladness that is not based on circumstances? Peace. Is there contentment in my heart? And do I act and speak to bring people together or to cause disunity? Patience. Am I slow to speak and slow to anger? Kindness. Am I merciful, tender, and sweet? Goodness. Am I generous and open-hearted? Faithfulness. Am I dependable, loyal, and full of trust? Gentleness. Am I humble, calm, and non-threatening? Self-control. Do I behave well, and am I sensitive to others? These are challenges for all of us. I am sure that we will all know in our hearts that we all need to cultivate more of all of those things. This is an ongoing work for us all. But just as we heard from the parable of the weeds, God gives us chances to do just that so that we may contribute to the good of the world and the good of society and the good of community and the good of our church family, rather than cause harm to any of those things. And I guess if we were to take the parable of the weeds a little bit further in light of those words from Galatians, we might ask ourselves another question. As well as cultivating those fruits of the spirit, are we avoiding, shall we say, stinky fruit? Fruit that has gone off, fruit that is rotten. Or in other words, when do we cause harm to others by our actions and our words? 
I'm sure that we can all think of people who speak unkindly, act unkindly. We perhaps know what it is like to be hurt by such behavior. But can we recognize such rotten fruit in our lives and get rid of it before it stinks up all that we do? So today we have been wrestling with some important issues of behavior, of action, of lifestyle, of inner thoughts and outer action and conduct. Or in other words, the harvest of ourselves. Of course, it means that we thought less about the harvest of the earth than we might normally. So to try to put that right, I want to end by talking about some things that come from the harvest of the earth and consider what they might say to us of the harvest of ourselves. So first of all, potato. If you've ever kept potatoes in your cupboard slightly too long, you will have seen the small sprouts that emerge which are called eyes. May we have eyes to look outward to the world to see it as God sees it. Corn, a traditional symbol of harvest. We even sung about it in our hymn, first the blade and then the ear, then the full corn shall appear. The ear of the corn is the part that contains the kernels. May we use our ears to listen and hear what God is saying to us. Tulips, obviously a more springtime flower and bear with me if you will, think about the word tulips. We've mentioned eyes and ears, so have you got what I'm talking about? Yes, I can hear that you have as you chuckle. Tulips, two lips. May we use our mouths to praise God and to speak kindness and justice. Bananas, a bunch of bananas is called a hand of bananas. May we use our hands to make a positive difference in the world. Artichokes. Now, as you know, I am not a great vegetable eater and I've never eaten an artichoke in my life. I don't even really know what an artichoke looks like, but I believe that when you eat an artichoke, what you eat is the heart of the artichoke artichoke. The heart is a symbol of love. May we live lives that reflect the love of God. Celery. Do you know where I'm going with this? We talk of a head of celery. May we use our heads so that all our gifts and talents are used thoughtfully for the good of all. And finally, runner beans. I couldn't miss out our legs, could I? Paul says in Hebrews 13 that we are to run the race before us. May we know God with us as our legs keep us going, cultivating the fruits of the Spirit. And may we thus make a good harvest of ourselves. May it be so. Amen. It seems fitting to me that we share communion at our harvest festival. We use in communion ordinary things of the earth, the bread 
and the wine, and they become for us something extraordinary. The fields have been ploughed with tractors. God has fed and watered. Human hands have made the bread that we break. And so as we prepare to share in the bread and wine, either at home or here in church, we're going to sing the hymn. It, well, the tune is number 130 in your hymn books, but the words are actually this more modern version that seems to be more relevant to the way we live our lives today. So we plough the fields with tractors, tune 130. Please join in the opening responses that are on the screen. God is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father almighty, creator of all. It is indeed right to bring you thanks and praise all year round. Your glory is made known in the beauty and wonder all around us. Your amazing love is seen in the bounteous providence of nature. 
you have spoken. And this world came into being, bursting with life. For the fruits of God's creation, thanks be to God. King of the heavens, grower of the vine, we thank you that Jesus lived among us, walking with his friends as they plucked grain from the wayside, breaking bread with the hungry on a hillside, overseeing a great harvest of fish at the lakeside, with us, for us, as one of us. Most of all that God has found us, thanks be to God. We thank you that our Lord Christ ate with sinners, and on the night before he died, he took bread, gift of heaven and work of human hands, and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of him. We thank you that Jesus shared with those who were celebrated and on that same mysterious night took a cup of wine, gift of heaven and work of human hands and gave it to his friends saying, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. As we share this holy meal, we remember that to gather all things to himself, our Lord died upon the cross for us. He was raised from death for us. He reigns and prays in heaven for us. Send now your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him forever. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord. Oh, thank the Lord for all his love. The way we will share together in communion here in church is the way that we have been doing for the last few months. The people on the balcony will come down first. I think there's san hand sanitizer uh, because you may be using the handrail on the, on the way down. And then we will go with the people who are at the back of the church uh, working our way forward remembering of course to use your distancing and for those of you who are at home for those of you that have bought gifts to eat and drink in your own homes we pray that this will also be a spiritual time for you as you eat and drink and as we remember that God's spirit goes across time and place. So God's table is open and all are welcome to share the feast, the gifts and fruits of God's love.
Our communion prayer is on the screen. We say together, O oh God, who has blessed us with every good thing, we thank you for the blessing of sharing these good things with you and with each other. May we be filled with your love, reaping the harvest of your spirit, to go from here as workers in your field and labourers in your vineyard. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer. We give thanks, O oh God, for the people of your world, people we know and love, and strangers we can only imagine. Each one of these created in your image. We pray for the leaders of your world. Give them wisdom. Inspire them to act with humility, to make peace and justice a priority. We pray for the voiceless of your world, subjected to violent and corrupt leaders. Give them a voice and inspire us to work with them in seeking justice. We pray for the peacemakers of your world. Give them strength. Inspire them to bring hope, no matter how small. Have mercy on us the people of this world. Remind us again of the good news of Jesus Christ. Fill us with the hope of your growing kingdom, that we may bear good fruit and teach us to play our part. Amen. And a moment of silence as we open ourselves to God, asking God to fill us with his presence as we lay our own troubles, our own concerns before God. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn, number 124, for the fruits of all creation. Thanks be to God.
fruit of God's spirit is love, joy, patience, kindness, faithfulness, generosity, self-control, gentleness, and peace. As we go from this place, may God go with us, cultivating within us the fruits of his spirit, that we may be a blessing to others. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with each one of us now and evermore. Amen. Thank you.